Okay, so let's start chapter 14. Chapter 14 deals with integration of, their, of our nervous system. Uh, so a lot of what I've done in the past two chapters, in chapters 12 and 13, is when I talked about a body, uh, you know, uh, an area of the spinal cord or the brain, I went ahead and did the integration at that point. So we're gonna do a very small amount of what's remaining here in chapter 14, which mainly deals with receptors. All right, so let's take a look at these sensory receptors. Now, I do wanna point out, we have sensory receptors all over our body, and this is just showing um, you know, how far apart uh, two things can be before we identify them as being two separate prick points, all right? So if you take these little calipers, you know, you're on your tongue, right? At this point, you're like, oh, that's two different, but if uh, two different points, uh, but if you get those closer together, we will just uh, interpret that as one point. And on our back, this can be very far apart from each other. Uh, so get those any closer together, we think of that as one point. And this is the reason why. So if uh, we have one of these calipers hitting one area and another area, but it's still within the range of the same neuron, our brain is gonna interpret that as being touched once. Here, and like on your fingertips or your tongue, we have many more nerve cells there. Uh, and so when we touch here and here, we can identify that as being two separate touches. Here would be interpreted as one still. Okay, so lots of senses in our body. Uh, whatever you heard about us having five senses is incorrect. We have many more than that, as you can see, and there's probably even more than this. So, what we think about as our five senses is taste and sight and hearing and smell and touch over here. But as you can see, we have all these other ones. Maintaining our balance, pain, pressure, pressure in, uh, in a different area, proprioception, which we'll talk about it here in a second, temperature, pain, and so on. Okay, let's look at uh, classification of stimulus types. Uh, so one are mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors are gonna sense touch, pressure, vibration, uh, stretch, and itch. Next are thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors uh, are gonna sense, uh, are sensitive to, to temperature changes. Photoreceptors, those are in our eyes, those respond to light. Chemoreceptors uh, respond to chemicals dissolved in solution, that's taste and smell are chemoreceptors. And lastly are nociceptors, and these respond to pain. Let's look at uh, the classification of receptors by location. Some are uh, external receptors, uh, and these are receptors sensitive to stimuli arising from outside the body. Uh, and these are found near uh, the body surface. So this would be touch, pressure, pain, temperature, and our special senses, which our special senses are those five senses that we think about. Uh, next are visceral receptors. These are receptors that respond to stimuli within the body. So they sense chemical changes like, you know, oxygen levels or carbon dioxide levels in our blood, uh, tissue stretch, uh, and temperature. Uh, the activity causes us to feel pain or pressure or hunger or thirst. All right. Lastly are appropriate receptors. These are receptors that occur in our skeletal muscles, tendons, joints, and ligaments. Uh, and they're in connective tissue that covers bone and also muscle and they send signals to our brain about body movements and also body positions. So, you know, I can uh, look away and I can't see my hand here, but I know I'm contracting those fingers. And the reason I know I'm contracting those fingers and putting them into a fist is due to proprioception that's occurring, okay? So if I take my fingers behind my hand back and I wiggle my fingers, I know I'm wiggling my fingers because of my proprioception, okay. Let's look at a uh, classification of structural complexity, all right? So some uh, of our receptors are simple receptors. They are modified dendritic endings of sensory neurons. And then we have complex receptors, which are our sense organs, like we use in vision and hearing, equilibrium, taste, and smell. We're gonna get those in chapter 15. So let's go back to those other ones. So uh, first are unencapsulated dendritic endings. These are simple, free nerve endings of sensory neurons. And that's what we see right here, all right? Uh, these are found all over the body. They're mostly in epithelia and connective tissue. And they sense a variety of senses like pain, pressure, temperature, and so on. 
Uh, next are these guys right here. These are tactile, also known as Merkel discs. They uh, are light touch receptors on the skin and they're associated with uh, nerve endings as well. Uh, next are hair receptors. You see those winding around that hair follicle. So they monitor movements of the hair. Next are encapsulated dendritic endings. Uh, these are endings of sensory neurons are encapsulated in connective tissue. So that's what these guys are over here. The first are, the first are misers corpuscles or tactile corpuscles. These are touch receptors, these guys. We talked about those uh, way back when uh, in the uh, looking at the tegmentary system. Next are uh, cross end bulbs. So I don't think I have a picture there, but I have a picture here this is what they look like. So cross end bulbs are tactile receptors in mucous membranes. Next are uh, piscinian or lamellated. So if we go back to this picture here, you can see that piscinian corpuscle right there, also known as a lamellated corpuscle. These are pressure receptors. Next is uh, Ruffini's uh, corpuscle. So we can see that right there. Uh, these respond to deep and continuous pressure. All right. All right, so next are uh, muscle spindles. These are in the paramycia of skeletal muscles. So that's uh, some connective tissue there around uh, in a skeletal muscle. And these detect muscle stretch, all right? So not letting us know how far a muscle is stretched and contraction and so on. Next are Golgi tendon organs. Uh, these are in tendons, and these are gonna detect tendon stretch. And we kind of talked about these. We talked about that reflex associated with that. Lastly are joint kinesthetic receptors, which I don't have a picture of. These monitors stretch in synovial joints, and they give information on the joint position and motion. And that's it in chapter 14.